All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Zach Tucker and Jeremy Grader, who are the founders and hosts of the Fit Mess podcast. How y'all doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for having uh, having us on. We're really glad to be here. Of course, yeah. No, happy to have you guys, and we like to jump right in. So if we could start with just hearing a little bit about both of you. I don't usually have two guests on the podcast, so this is going to be interesting how we kind of manage this. But um, yeah, if you could each just tell us a little bit about yourself, then we can jump in. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll go first since, uh, you know, it was, it was me who, who went to Jeremy and said, we should do a podcast. Uh, my name is Zach. Um, I've been doing, uh, you know, so like self-help and like making myself a better person for a long, long, long time. Um, and probably, you know, 20 years or so, the first 20 years of my life were very, very negative and traumatic and just lots of issues. Um, and then the, the, you know, the last 20 years have been fixing all of those issues. Um, and one of the, one of the things I learned along the way was being vulnerable and being in touch with my emotions and being emotionally intelligent. Um, and I met Jeremy, let's see about maybe about 11 years ago, uh, when our, when our kids were born and we, uh, we kind of, we got to know each other really well. And we started to have these conversations together about, you know, being vulnerable and struggling and mental health and physical health issues and things like that. Um, so that's, you know, a very, very, very quick story of my life and how Jeremy and I met. But uh, along the way, we we kind of decided that, you know, other guys aren't having these conversations and we wanted to, uh, you know, get it out there, make it public. So I told him, hey, we should do a podcast because you've, you've done podcasts before, but let's do it on, you know, mental and physical health and you know, complain about, you know, how we're struggling and failing and not doing the things. And he said, absolutely not. that he wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought the idea was terrible because who was I, right? Like, I don't have anything on the wall that says I, I'm some guru that I know a thing or two. I went to school to learn all about this stuff. But what I've quickly found out was that a lot of people in this space were in the same position. They, they, they've just been experimenting, trying things and sharing what works and what doesn't. And where there is a knowledge gap, you bring in an expert who does have a thing hanging on the wall that can help you fill in those gaps. And so that's really the genesis of the thing is that we had been doing all this work to improve our, our mental, physical, spiritual, emotional health. And, and you know, the, that vulnerability came with time. There was initially we did what guys do. You walk into the relationship with walls up and, and guarded and talking about the sports ball event that happened last Thursday or whatever the thing is, but it was over time. I think through the the shared experience of parenthood that we were able to, you know, talk about, are you getting enough sleep? Are you taking care of yourself? What are you doing? Man, this part's hard, isn't it? Can you believe that? And the more that we opened up through that uh, avenue, the more that we shared, like, I'm struggling to lose this weight. I'm struggling with this in my diet. I can't seem to get to the gym enough, like whatever the thing is. And that is really where, where the, the meat of this came from is sharing that struggle because you know, when you look online, all you see is perfection. You see these people that are just killing it every day. They're in the gym, you know, six hours a day and they eat perfectly. And that just wasn't relatable. There was, there wasn't any way to really connect with that for us. So we wanted to be the two regular guys that are trying stuff and sharing what works and what doesn't for us in hopes that for somebody out there like us, who's, you know, probably in their thirties, probably a new parent, exhausted, tired, not knowing what to do. Uh, we wanted to, to help them not feel so alone and offer them a way if they were indeed sick of their own crap and wanted to get out of their way, here are a few things you can start trying and just see if it works for you. And so that's really where all this came from. Love it. Both of you guys were really big on vulnerability right there when you were talking about mm -hmm. yourselves. And my experience with vulnerability is interesting to say the least. <laughs> um, so when I think vulnerability, I it is easy for me to tell people about my life, but it is hard for me to feel vulnerable when I do it. And mm. so I'm, I think it was um, just an interesting thing I realized, like I really value honesty. And so I realized that kind of as a younger kid. And so I didn't mind being honest with people, but yeah. I created this kind of apathetic wall to where even if I told you, I did not care about what you thought about me or my life, which can be good oh, in some situations, but can be really bad in other situations. And so vulnerability for me wasn't always telling people something. It was trusting them with something so mm -hmm. maybe that's a little nuanced but can you guys speak to the difference between that yeah i mean i think i think one of the things that we talk about a lot is the fact that you know we all need help 
in some way, whatever we're struggling with in life, whatever we're going through, we always need help. But especially as guys, it's really hard to ask for it. And when it's hard to ask for it, it's that much harder for it to show up. So we discovered, I, I think, largely in each other that when we went to the other with, oh man, this, I don't know what to do about this. The other one would say, you know what? I went through that and I tried this and it worked for me. And I go, oh, cool. Or Zach would go like, oh yeah, that sounds good. And so it's, it's just a matter of sharing the ugly parts, the, the part that's difficult, sharing what you're struggling with and just sort of either putting it out to the universe. If you subscribe to that, putting it out to your God, if you subscribe to that or putting it out to just a friend or a loved one or somebody it's a, it's amazing how just sharing that, sharing that, uh, that part of you that you're, especially as guys that you're supposed to hide, like you're supposed to have all the answers, be able to fix everything, not, not ever be broken, not ever be tired. Um, when you can share that I am tired, then someone can say, why don't you take a break? When you can share that, I don't, I don't know how to fix this. Oh, here, here's a manual. Here's, here's, I watched this YouTube video. Like it's just, it can be dumb stuff like that, but it can also be like the deep stuff of like, I'm struggling with this as a parent. I don't know how to you know, connect with my kid on this or whatever. And someone can say, dude, here's what I'm hearing from you. Try this. Yeah. And it's just the, the more that we just share that just the, the existence of life can be really challenging and it's okay to be flawed and to not have the answers. It's incredible how many of the answers suddenly appear just by sharing that you're having that hard time. Yeah. Yeah. I Okay, if I could just add one thing to that, I know, you know, I, I, I tell my story a lot and I don't really feel like I'm being vulnerable when I'm telling my story because it's something that I have already experienced. I have already figured out. I've already worked through the, a large majority of, of those items. Uh, to Jeremy's point, you know, when I'm being vulnerable, it's, it's those moments where I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to interpret what I'm feeling. And you know, he mentioned the universe, but what I found is when you actually say to somebody that you're struggling with something and you don't know the answers and you don't know what to do, the teacher or the, the guide or the, you know, the coach shows up because you have verbalized it and you've put it out there. And I, you know, I'll tell Jeremy that I'm struggling with something and he might not have an answer for me immediately, but he might know somebody and be like, Hey, could you text Zach? Like, I think he, you, you, you could help him or somehow like these things happen. I know, you know, when I was having some really big physical struggles of, you know, being in shape, you know, I just kind of, I put it out there and I didn't have the answers. I didn't have the solutions. And like the coach that I needed just showed up and was like, Hey, come work with me. And things worked. So, you know, I, I, I see vulnerability as, as those moments where you don't know what the answer is and you don't know what to do and you're you're stuck and the you know talking about those things that's real vulnerability talking about your past that's also vulnerable because you don't necessarily want to share that information but those are things that you fixed largely so that that's the main difference for me yeah i love that a lot especially because i think my most vulnerable point was when i realized that i was protecting myself by not caring what people thought so i could be vulnerable without being vulnerable and then i told people that I was having problems feeling intimacy with them because I didn't care what they thought. And then I put that out there and was like, will you still accept me? Because at that point, there was a question mark where I didn't have the answer. And I was just relying on them to be like, yeah, I'll accept you. Yeah, I'll still love you. And I would say that was my most vulnerable spot right there. So I really like what both is, of you said. Is that what you found, though, when you when you put that out there where they're like, yeah, of course, dude. Like, is that is that the result you you got? Yes. Yes. Nice. Mostly because there were people that like I had been walking with for years. Like we were leading young life together. We were all Christian. We were like doing ministry together. And so we all kind of put our stakes on this unconditional love, but I was holding back from allowing them to unconditionally love me because I wasn't being vulnerable. And so yeah. uh, I didn't just do it with Joe Schmo off the street. <laughs> Sure. I did it no, there's, there's a time and a place. There's a time and a place. You don't want to just be like the, you know, the random person at the bus stop. Hey, listen, let me tell you a thing or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into y'all's motivation. What really gets you up and keeps you going every day? Hmm. There's, there's quite a bit to it. Um, I think 
my number one motivation at this point in my life is, you know, my, my daughter, I have a, an 11 year old daughter. Um, I, most of the things that I do in this world are to make sure that she's going to grow up and be happy, healthy, responsible person. Um, try and live by example to show her what that's like. You know, I, you know, work my job so that she can, you know, have a house to live in, you know, be supported uh, in ways that that I never was. Um, so that that's probably my number one driving motivation is is my daughter. Um, but very close second to that is, you know, again, I shared like the first 20 years of my life were really bad. Um, you know, I was in jail. I it, for if you just if you just continued to follow the trend line, I probably would have been dead. Um, and but the community, like the people around me kept giving me chances and kept giving me chances when I, I didn't deserve any of them. So, you know, I, the close second to me is like giving back to the community. That's one of the reasons why we do the podcast. Um, I want to help other people, you know, not get out of situations that I was in, but just to be better people because there was always another person waiting for me to, to listen to what they had to say. So my daughter and just giving back to the community. Those are my two big motivators. Here we go. I'm going to piggyback on, on the kid thing. Like, obviously that's, that's it, right? Like I, I constantly think about how at this point in my life, I largely exist as a memory for my children. And so, and, and, you know, whenever the time comes and I am not here anymore, I want them to remember me, uh, in, in, in a positive way and in, in some way. And so I want their lives to be uh, positively affected by the impacts and the decisions that I make to, to give them a better life. Um, and then more selfishly, the other thing is just who am I going to be in 20 years? And what would that guy say to me now? Because the guy now is saying to 20 year old me, Hey idiot, you're making a lot of stupid decisions and, and you're going to figure it out in about 10 or 15 years. But right now you're, you're, you're making some dumb choices and you need to make better ones. So I want in 20 years to look back at this version of me and say, thank you. I'm glad you started paying attention and started doing things better uh, because I don't want to deal with chronic pain. I don't want to deal with diseases that were preventable. I don't want to deal with, you know, I don't want to deal with not being here because of some stupid thing I did now, right? Like I, I want to be doing everything I can now to make sure that I'm around and, and that I'm available physically, mentally, emotionally for my family, whatever that looks like at that point, whether I have grandkids or whatever the deal is. Um, I just, I want that version of me to be more proud of me than I am of me 20 years ago. Mm. Love it. Love it. And Jeremy, you kind of got into it right there, but great segue into dreams and goals. What is y'all's vision for your life individually and then for the podcast going forward? I mean, you, you asked me that at an interesting time in my life because, because I, uh, I'm sort of living the dream that I had a couple of years ago, my, my wife and I were, um, everybody was dealing with COVID and we were you know, like trying to figure out what is, what does this all this mean? What do we want our lives to look like? And we were in the hustle and bustle. We were in the rat race, living in the city and, you know, commuting for hours and after school event after after school event and all of the things. And I was in a toxic job that my doctor was telling me for 10 years. Every time I saw him for my physical, he would say, why do you still do that? You need to quit that job. It's killing you. Um, and so my wife had lost her job. I was so burned out on mine. I hated it. And we decided that we wanted to just rip the bandaid off, take a huge leap of faith and hope that a net would appear. And so we ended up moving from, from Seattle to a small town in Canada. And, you know, I, I make it sound like that happened quickly. It was, it was basically like a year long process of like, we came up, explored, figure out where we wanted to go. And I live today, two doors down from the house where I stood on a porch one day, drinking a cup of coffee, looking out at the mountains that surround me and saying, I need to live here. <laughs> I, I want the life that this environment provides. I want the freedom to work from here or wherever I want I just, I just had this vision of like, what do I want my life to be? And a year and a half later, I'm living it. Like I literally created it, took all the steps necessary, and I'm now living that life. So I'm in this weird spot in my life where I'm like, I thought this was going to take a lot longer. So now I'm here and I don't know what's next yet, right? Like I'm still sort of thinking that through. Um, there's obviously professional things like with this podcast, I'd love for this to be, to be reaching more people, helping more people, having a greater impact. 
I think that's one goal. Um, you know, showing up better for my kids, showing up better for my wife, like just showing up better in, in all aspects of my life. But, but I don't know that that goal will ever go away. Like no matter how great it gets, that's sort of the North star that keeps me trying to find new things and talk about them on the show. So, uh, I, I wish I had some concrete, this is, this is the goal that I have in my life, but having achieved one much faster than having achieved like the biggest one I could have imagined much faster than I did. I'm in this weird spot where I'm like, I don't know what's next. And, and I'm kind of okay with that right now. Cool. Wow. Uh, so I, I can only talk about my goals and, you know, like I'm trying to achieve them. Jeremy just crushed it. Um, <clears throat> so I, I've spent the last, I don't know, 18 months, uh, really, I think reassessing my life. Um, I, you know, the two largest things in anyone's life, their job and in their marriage, um, I decided to walk away from, um, because neither one was making me happy. Um, so I am actually, I, I guess I could say I'm almost in Jeremy's spot in that, like I've, I made those decisions to, uh, help my life, make me a happier, healthier person, which both of them did. I, you know, now have the job of my dreams and that's fantastic. Um, and you know, the marriage thing was a, a, you know, 20 years of, of being with, with a person and we fell out of love with each other. We don't hate each other. We don't, um, argue, we don't fight We none of that. We just realized one day we're two totally different people than, than who we were when we met 20 years ago. Um, so, um, I'm really just focusing on me and taking care of me and making sure that I'm healthy. Um, I list my top three priorities in life and these are my dreams really. Um, and they're, solely focused on my daughter again. Um, but one, you know, I, I take care of myself so that I can live as long as possible to be there for my daughter. Um, you know, and I, I go to work, um, and I, you know, I work what I can and I make the money that I can so that my daughter has a really good life. And then, you know, again, all for my daughter, which is like that, that third, third thing for me. But, um, you know, my dreams, lifelong goal, is really just to is to be okay with who I am in any moment at any time, regardless of the situation. Um, and to your point earlier, not really care what people think about me because, you know, for the first 30 years of my life, that was, that was a large concern of mine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Be okay with who you are at any moment, any time, regardless of the situation. That is like, that's such a um something everybody wants you know whether we speak it or whether we don't it's like that's so core to because we are with ourselves all the time right <laughs> so if you're not okay yeah. with yourself it's gonna cause some cause some trouble well yeah. awesome so we got jeremy grow the podcast generally showing up better for kids wife and all aspects of your life and then for you zach it's being okay with who you are any moment anytime regardless of the situation and then making sure you're healthy and making the money to provide the life for your daughter that she wants to see. Yep. Cool. Cool. Any other dreams or goals that I want to talk about before we move on? Uh, just travel. I'm, you know, big, I want to see the world. That's it. Gotcha. Where, where would your first place be? <laughs> uh, I'm actually planning it now. Um, I think I'm going to be going to Singapore in, in March, Singapore in March. There yes. you go. There you go. Love it. Well, awesome. This one might be a little less tangible for you guys to answer, but I'm going to throw it out there, see what answers we get. What are the top one to two skills that you guys need to develop to make your dream life come true? Mm, actually, I think that's pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> the anything, you know, any any of the dreams that I do have require change, constant change reevaluating who I am, what my opinions are, what my beliefs are. And I would say the number one skill that I need to have to make all of my dreams come true is to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and being wrong, um, to be able to reassess all the things that I know to be true as potentially false and look at it with open eyes. So like just being okay with the fact that, huh, this thing I've believed for 43 years, that's not true. That's not really true. And changing my opinion and changing my viewpoint. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I work in technology. So like the world is changing for me all the time. So I totally get how resistant people are to change. 
and myself included, I don't like to break out of my routine. I don't like to do things different. I don't like to think that I've been wrong for 10 years, but I usually am. So just being comfortable with change and being okay with that discomfort because that's where you're going to grow and that's where you're going to meet those dreams and your goals along the way is if you grow. For sure. To me, the number one is discipline. It's, I know I can always do better. Um, I, I try really hard to not negotiate with my goals, but I, but I do more than I care to admit. Um, I was, I was at a, a, at a, like a wellness event recently and we're working through some stuff and it was just, it was so like, it was, I said this thing that rolled out of my mouth and it's, I just, I'm stuck with it. And it's that with so many areas of my life, I know better, but I can't feel better. And trying to figure out that disconnect, like, well, like I know the tools, I know the steps, I know all the things, I know what I'm supposed to feel, I know what I'm supposed to think, but like feeling, like owning it, being, making it a part of who I am, part of my routine, part of what I do, it is discipline. It's about, it's about doing it every day, doing the practice. When the self-talk starts, you know, bashing me over the head, not giving it space, right? Like dismissing it, letting it go. I know better but it still takes over when times are tough. I've had a rough couple of days, like whatever's going on, you know, the pantry calls and and you do the emotional eating, you do something to just numb the pain for a minute so you can get back and try again tomorrow. Like all those little things that I do too much, it's all discipline. It's, it's just having a better why, having a, a better reason, mm-hmm. a, a bigger, better offer than whatever the short-term, you know, uh, numbing of the pain is. Um, that's a big one for me. That's no matter how far I've come. And and I have to, I often have to look back at how far I've come to be proud of it and to realize that this work is worth it. But that is probably something I'll wrestle with my entire life is, is having the discipline I need to actually accomplish the things I want instead of talking about the struggle to achieve them for years and years. So that would be the key thing I think for me is just better discipline. Mm, I got you better discipline yeah discipline is a it's an interesting thing because you know in social media you have the you have the people who are like discipline 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 just like eat discipline for breakfast lunch Mm -hmm. dinner snack dessert they're just eating discipline all day but then at the same token you have the well i'm also a human side of things and so it's like when you are trying to become more disciplined at least for myself something I've realized is when trying to become more disciplined, there's like also a level of grace that's mm-hmm. needed to yep. keep the discipline going. Like mm-hmm. it, it would be okay to fail. And that relieves some of the pressure, which allows me to stay disciplined because mm-hmm. under that pressure, that's when I start to procrastinate too much, which was a weird mental model that I had to shift. It was like, dude, if I know you said you're going to post a daily podcast, but if you miss one day, the world will not stop spinning on its axis so you yep. can stop beating yourself up over potentially <laughs> missing one day when you haven't yep. even missed one yet. And so it's like, um, I don't know, just that discipline is such a, I feel like it's intertwined with other character traits, if that makes sense. But Yeah. And I think, you know, again, going back to the, the, the thing of being guys, like we're, we're supposed to be kind of infallible and we're not supposed to make the mistakes and crack and all those things. And so when we do set a goal of, you know, getting in better shape or taking care of ourselves in some way or whatever. And we do fall short. Like, at least for me, that's, that's a trigger. The self-talk starts going like, what made you think you could do that anyways? You, you haven't done it in 40 years. Why would you start now? You're such a loser, like all the things. And that stuff can just spiral. And then all of a sudden that's the only voice in your head. And so all of the things that set you up to want to go down that path to begin with no longer matter because this is the, this is who's in charge. They're driving the bus. Mm-hmm. And so having the ability to have that self-awareness to question those beliefs, to look for the evidence. Am I really a loser or was today just a hard day? Did something bad happen that was beyond my control? Maybe that's all this is. Maybe it's okay that you missed a podcast episode today because life got in the way. Like all that stuff that like, you know, when, when the song, you know, is beating yourself up all the time, that's the song you're going to play because you're good at it. But when you're trying to learn a new song that is, you know, I, I, it's okay to, to make mistakes. It's okay to be a human being and it's okay to try again tomorrow. You don't know how to play that song. It's a lot harder to sit down and decide to do it. So it's just, that that's, to me, that's the discipline. It's just recognizing those patterns in myself and, and being more compassionate and understanding 
that it's okay to make mistakes, but keep your eye on the prize. Keep going forward. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And what are the highest impact daily actions that each of you can take to tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals? Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's all about, <laughs> it's all about routine um, to know that I've got the space to achieve those things. So I, you know, again, Jeremy, Jeremy rolls his eyes and makes this really weird face. Whenever I say this, I get up at four 30 every morning. Oh God. No, yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, I, you know, I, I, I get up at four 30 every morning. I go to the gym, um, except for the two days I take off from the gym. I, I go to yoga instead. Um, and I, I take care of myself first thing in the morning, um, work out health, just be healthy, be with myself, take, quiet time for myself, you know, first thing in the morning. And I really set my day up. So usually, you know, by the time everyone else is getting up at, you know, eight o'clock, I've already had wild success and that I woke up in general. And I'm great. I'm grateful for that every single morning that I got another day. I've worked out. I've had quiet time. I've had meditative time. Um, I've planned my day out. And then from there, like I just have the success and it kind of rolls. So everything that I want to accomplish in my life, it really depends on that, that very first thing in the morning, like having a couple of quick wins, having a routine of taking care of myself. And I know that works for me because I can manage to get up at 4.30 in the morning. Jeremy, again, rolls his eyes whenever I say that because he's like 4.30. No, I'm still, still in la-la land. Um, but that is one of the biggest things for me is to have those wins in the morning, take care of myself and set myself up for success. The worst possible thing that could, could happen to me is that I have a bad day and I can look back at the end of the day and be like, you know what? I still won in the morning. Like I still had a good day because I took care of me. I did the things I wanted to do. And it was, a, it was a W today. I think something I'm doing more of now, uh, and, and it's one of those things where I wish 10 years ago, me would have done more of, even a year ago, me would have done more of, is is measuring uh, what's working and what's not and comparing it to new ideas. Uh, it's it's so funny. Zach and I did an interview. I don't even remember how long ago now. It's probably a couple of years ago. And the person we talked to introduced us to the idea of delaying caffeine. Like, don't, don't have your first cup of coffee for an hour and a half, two hours because of the way your body reacts. It can wake up naturally, blah, 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 and all these things. And it keeps your energy more stable throughout the day. And so I took it as gospel and went, cool, I'm going to try this. And maybe it did for a while. Maybe it was psychosomatic. I don't know. But a couple of weeks ago, I was reading about how different people's bodies react differently to caffeine delay and whether or not it's better to have it first thing in the morning or to delay. And I have been sitting here waking up, feeling miserable, taking hours to get the engine running and just like, oh, I just, I, I wake up feeling awful every day. Why? Like I, do, I do most of the things right occasionally I splurge, I make mistakes, I do the things, but for, for all the effort I'm making, I should not feel like this. And so this influencer that I follow was like, you know, caffeine delay is cool for some people, but for some people you need it to get things work. And, and I'm, I'm no scientist. I, I couldn't tell you what, like what happens uh, biologically to your body. But the, the case he made was for some people, caffeine first thing in the morning actually gets you going so that uh, all the things need to happen to keep you and stable and, and energized throughout the day. And so again, questioning the evidence, I've been doing this delay thing for a long time, feel miserable. Let's try that. And so now I have coffee first thing in the morning and it's incredible how much more stable I feel throughout the day. I'm able to get to work faster, more clear headed. It works better for me. And so little things like that, where I'm just trying to track and just get curious about, okay, what's the problem? How can I solve it? Write it down, measure it just being becoming really aware and getting curious uh, about the problems in my life. And are there solutions that I'm overlooking or are there solutions that I don't know yet that I need to go explore? And that that's just one example where, where just that small change of just having a cup of coffee first thing in the morning, which is basically all I did for two hours every morning anyways, was go, God, I can't wait till I can have that cup of coffee. Once I can have that, everything's going to be better. And like, dummy, listen to your body. It's okay to try that. Let's see if it works. And so far it's working great. So that, that would be one thing I would say is just like where, where there are problems, get curious about why, and then experiment with something different and track it and see what's working. Um, that, that would be my advice, I guess. 
That's really interesting. And uh, just a, such a great point of like, <laughs> I do the same thing. I used to drink like a gallon of water a day back when I was playing football in high school. And it was like, that was basically how I judged a day. It's like, did I get through my gallon of water today? Uh, now, <laughs> for example, it's 239. I haven't had a sip of water. And what happens is typically around this time, my head will start hurting. I'll be like, I wonder why my head hurts. And it's like, well, you haven't drink water. <laughs> And so right. it's just like <laughs> these little cues that your body give you um, of like you of like, I want coffee. I want coffee. I want coffee. You drink the coffee. You feel better. It's like, yeah, maybe you should try drinking it in the morning. <laughs> like, right. right, right. Up. And then you do yeah. it and you feel great. You know, I just think that's so, so interesting how stubborn we can be when we have like a thought in our head of how something's supposed to be. And it's just wrong. You're just wrong. You know? Well, especially because the original concept was, oh, that's the new thing. That's mm -hmm. the thing I need. To, I haven't considered that. That's new information. And then you think, oh, that's what's better for the human body. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing is that we're all really different. We all operate really differently. As much as we all kind of like walk and move the same, there's a lot going on inside that when you make little tweaks along the way, you're like, oh, wow, I suddenly don't hate life for two hours every morning. That's kind of cool. I think I'll stick with this for a while and see if this works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. What character trait do you guys most need to develop? And this might, Jeremy, echo the last question for you a little bit yeah. with discipline, but what are some of the character traits you guys need to develop to get to where you want to be? Uh, I would say for me, I'm I'm doing a lot of work right now on compassion. It's it's one that I uh, I didn't realize how much I struggled with uh, until I started. I'm I'm in the middle of this like nine month uh, course workshop thing that I'm doing, and it's really revealed to me that a lot of where I'm still in my own way and a lot of where I'm stuck is not offering myself enough compassion, not offering my family enough compassion, not allowing the things that I struggle with in life, just coming from like approaching them from a place of, of more forgiveness, more openness and trying to show up in a way that I can help rather than showing up in a way that tries to bend everyone else's lives to my will. Um, so that's been a big one for me is just trying to stop controlling everything so much and just allow life to unfold and play the part that I'm supposed to play in any given moment rather than feeling like I'm the one in charge and I'm the one with all the answers and, you know, and carrying that pressure. So that's something I'm definitely working a lot on right now is just compassion for myself and others. Gotcha. 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 But I, but I will definitely go the discipline way because that, that is something that, that I'm, I am currently working on. Um, I've, you know, my job is, is pretty demanding. Jeremy has seen my calendar. It's, it's, it, it is legit. Like, will give you heart palpitations. If you look at my calendar, it's I'm like booked all over the place. So when I, you know, when I make a, a plan for myself to do something, you know, like, you know, work on the podcast or help Jeremy out with something like that. And I get, you know, this 20, 30 minute free time in the middle of the day in between meetings or whatever I have to do. Um, the motivation isn't there for me, right? Because I'm tired. I'm busy. And a lot of times because the motivation isn't there, I'm like, well, you know, I guess, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. And, you know, I go to the cupboard and I eat something or, you know, grab a snack or whatever. And then I come back and jump into the next meeting and I didn't get the thing done that I said I was going to do. Um, and Jeremy and I talk about this all the time. Like, you know, motivation never comes like it, it it's fleeting. Like it, it's just, if you wait for motivation to do anything, you're never going to get it done. Um, but discipline on the other hand is you say you're going to do something, you do it. Right. If you can get yourself in that mindset, if you can just make sure you do that, all of these promises that you make with yourself, these contracts that you make with yourself, you don't negotiate them and you just do what you're what you say you're going to do. Um, that's really important to me because I, I do have a lot on my plate. I have, you know, and I think Jeremy would agree, like I probably have more on my plate than the average person. And it's hard to get it all done. But in order to get it all done. I need more discipline. So that that's the one thing that I'm I'm really focusing on in my life right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Discipline. Sounds good. Well, before we jump into the next question about kind of who you guys can meet to take that next step, I want to hear more about the podcast because we've neglected to talk about it in depth up to this point. So tell us about kind of what the podcast is about, the structure of the show. Do you guys have guests on? Like, just give us the rundown of the show. 
Yeah, we we have a couple of different approaches. We're we're doing more and more sort of solo episodes of just us, our experience, the the things we're working on, the things that we're researching, and and just sharing that information just from our own point of view and what we're learning. Uh, but then again, you know, where there are knowledge gaps, we bring in experts and and we share their perspective and the things that they're doing and how they can help. Um, so we're currently we're on a once a week schedule. We're looking to increase that uh, in the new year. Um, in addition to that, it is it's largely this kind of conversation. It's it's sharing small habits, small changes, small little things that you can add to your life, these little micro steps that you can just try, experiment, fail, learn, try the next thing so that, you know, as you do more of them, more of them become automatic, they become habits. And all of a sudden you're looking back on your life a year later, five years later, 10 years later and going, man, I was in a bad, dark place and I didn't even realize it. Look how much farther I've come. And so we're really just trying to help People like us in the beginning of our journey who felt alone, didn't know where to turn, didn't know what to do, had no idea where to start, and just offering just those little steps, like little things to try, even if it is just a matter of self-awareness and getting curious, like, why do I feel like this? Why do I want something better? Like, why why am I not happy with my life? You know, whatever it is. So that's that's the key is, is just really trying to help someone else to, to sort of be a guide that's just a few steps ahead of someone else on their journey and introduce new ideas, new concepts, maybe not even new, maybe just new to them uh, in, in a way that I hope is relatable so that they will uh, adapt them and, and make them a part of their own experience. There we go. Zach, you got anything to add to that or was that a pretty good? That was, that was, that was spot on. I, you know, I'll just, I'll just echo, echo the fact that, you know, we, we jump onto the show as two regular guys um, because there's nothing special about us. We're pretty ordinary um, in, and you know we struggle with life like just like everyone else does we're just two normal guys um with the one exception that you know we we question our beliefs we 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 were open to the fact that we could be wrong about something and like jeremy said we make micro adjustments and we talk about those and we we talk to experts and um yeah it's it's been a really really fabulous journey of like having this show and learning all these things about myself that to be honest, I don't know if I would have learned all of these things if we weren't doing the show. So from a selfish point of view, I love doing the show. But yeah, it, it's 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 great to talk to experts. It's great to be vulnerable. It's great to be just two ordinary guys on the mic. So gotcha. and, and one funny one funny uh, sort of side effect of this is that, you know, we started the show trying to reach out to other men. That was the whole concept of where two guys having these open, vulnerable conversations. We thought, man, guys don't talk like this. If, if we show that it can be okay. Maybe it'll open a door. Maybe it'll help some other guy who is struggling with vulnerability or whatever it is. And it is just so funny how often the people we hear from are the wives or the girlfriends of the guy who are saying, ah, I wish my husband would listen to this. I wish my, I wish my boyfriend would listen to this. So it, it's just funny how it, how it lands differently than we intend, but hopefully, you know, they, they're taking that step and introducing it to those guys that, uh, that maybe aren't exposed to this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It is funny how much uh, the women in men's lives can be such a catalyst for, hey, yes. getting your emotional intelligence right or getting your compassion right, whatever it may be. Just curious, yeah. do you guys ever see the podcast growing with a business on the back end of like retreats or masterminds or coaching or something like that for men with vulnerability or something to that yeah. effect? Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely the the path that I think we're trying to go down. I think I think in a perfect world, we would love to just be focused on helping people and and making a living doing that so that we could help more people. Yep. Um, as it turns out, this is a grind and it takes a while to get there. So that's, you know, we're, we're still climbing the mountain. So hopefully at some point we'll be able to offer all of those things. You're telling me. I started posting a daily podcast last year and I thought 90 days in it was going to blow up and <laughs> everyone, does. everyone does everyone sees on, on TikTok and Instagram want to get famous just share your thoughts on a podcast and watch the money fly in the window yeah and everyone starts doing it and seven episodes later they're like oh great I have six listens I have yep. seven episodes and six listens what am I doing wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so true too true <laughs> Well, awesome. If there were one or two people that you guys can meet, and this could be a specific person or a type of person, and they really help you take that next step towards these dreams and goals, who would that person be and how would they help you? I mean, there, there's one person that I that I follow a lot more now than I ever thought I would. It's uh, Alex Hermosi. I love that man. <laughs> He's the man. Like if if I could have like, a, like just a, a pinky full of what 
drives him and his confidence and his ability to just do what he sets his mind out to do. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. The, The way that he just looks at everything so simply of just like, is this thing getting me there? then I'm not doing it anymore. He, there was some great video he posted the other day about the the early wake up and making your bed every morning. He's like, what a waste of time and energy. If I add up the amount of time that I spend pulling a sheet <laughs> off of my bed to then pull it back onto my bed, I'm not doing it. It's a waste of time. Why? It's not getting me any closer to my goals. It's not setting me up for success. It's not. It's nothing. It's a waste of time. I'm not doing it. And just the way that he approaches stuff like that, where it's just, you know, we, we were, again, we're told these things, these are what you're supposed to do. And if you don't do them, you're going to be a failure. Does the evidence support that? Does it really, does taking uh, two minutes out of my day to, to make my bed and unmake my bed again later, is that really getting me closer to my goals of like being a successful podcaster? No. Why am I doing it? I'm done. So man, I know I can't afford it now, but lunch with that guy would, would change my life. Just got to get a $3 million company and he'll buy, buy equity. Right. Then I'm, then I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's sorry, Jeremy. You just, you just made me feel terrible because you know, I wake up really early <laughs> and I literally make my bed every morning. <laughs> wasting your time, Zach. You're wasting. No, no, ah. I should say, no, but, but if your goal, if part of your goal is to have a clean and tidy house, then yes, that does make sense. And that is part so, of it, but it, it literally takes me seven seconds to make my bed right that's it like it, it, it's not it's not a big commitment for me i feel that i feel that do you have somebody in mind or was your would yours also be alex exactly? uh no i've got someone else right now like um i've actually been i've read a lot of his work and fought and followed him and i'm rereading it just because a lot of the 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 leadership tactics are good um and it really echoes discipline um i would I would love to sit down with Jocko Willinkett for a little bit right now. He is, um, he is extreme and very hardcore when it comes to his, his style. Um, but I think lately he's been, he's been kind of realizing that we are not all ridiculous human beings like, like he is in the, in the discipline world. So he's been publishing a lot of stuff that's like, Hey, here's what you should do and this is what we're going to do and then here's the the middle where where you're going to be okay but you know his level of just get it done just do it like the the discipline factor is um really inspiring for me so i i would sit down with him if i could and i he is actually on our our list of people that we would love to have on our show so jeremy can you please get on that <laughs> Why is my, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just call him on, on his cell phone really quick, Phil. Give him a quick jingle and see if he's available. <laughs> yeah, right right next to Alex Hormozzi. Yeah, show. exactly. <laughs> they're, they're right next to each other on my phone. It's weird. I don't know how, <laughs> how that happened. Awesome. Yeah, those two are just beasts. Like, mm-hmm. They're both just such epic individuals. And what I really love, like, I don't know if it was Jocko or it was somebody who is very much like Jocko with the discipline, but they, they're like, yeah, the the question of whether or not I am doing something doesn't even come to my mind. Like when my alarm rings, I get up. Like that's what mm-hmm. happens. There's no question of, am I getting up? It's I get up. And then with Alex Hormozzi, it's really interesting for him because he's 32 right now, 10 years ago, he was 22 and very much in like a corporate consulting job and like people pleasing his father and yeah. very much in the situation that the average American is in today, the average kind of, just citizen in a first world country is in today and he made such drastic changes to the point where he's way different from everybody 10 years later and so it's just crazy to see that intensity and that change over such a relatively short amount of time well and part of it part of his thing too i think is just the just how easily he clears the blocks like again another video he posted the other day was like how to get the most protein out of a lunch at like out of like gas station food Yep. And in like the diet space, there's such a like, oh, I'm only going to Whole Foods to get the purest, most organic, most locally sourced, you know, animal friendly thing. And he's pulling out like, get the muscle milk and this, you know, can of tuna fish. And like it all, it was like a 400 calorie diet, but or or meal, but it was like 80 grams of protein at the okay. gas station. And I was like, I I beat myself up about like, oh, this isn't the most organic, the best option I could have been eating for this meal. If, you, if you're just hitting the numbers, like, okay, good. That's fine. Like, it's hard to find perfect food. Let's find what's close enough and just like yeah. 
just clear that clutter out of your head and just get it done. Absolutely. He says, um, if you want to be like the 1%, you can't think like the 99. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm such a big fan of Alex Hormozzi. In yeah. fact, one of my questions is going to be based on him. I know we only have six minutes left, so we're going to run through these last couple of questions. Right. Um, what is a limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life for both of you? Um, if, if any, if any. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, I've I've got plenty. <laughs> I've, the first 20 you years. You need another my... hour. Do you got time? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> First 20 years of my life actually um, instilled a lot of limiting beliefs that I still to this day um, fight against. And I was told my entire life that I am not smart, that I am fat, and that I'm stupid. And those three things live with me to this day when all evidence, all evidence suggests that I have a decent IQ. Um, I do very well, you know, physically. I, you know, lift weights and I'm, you know, pretty trim. But those those things still stick with me. And I look, I look for evidence mm. that I am not those things because I will spend half of my day thinking that I'm stupid or I'm fat or I'm it I it's so interesting. Like I cannot get them out of my head because I had 20 years of programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I, I share those. I share, you know, for for any number of things. I'm not good enough. That's for other people. You have to be super lucky. You have to like whatever thing I want to accomplish, whatever I want to be, whoever I want to be, that's for other people. Like I, I'm the I'm the victim that the world's you know out to get. That like that kind of stuff rolls around in my head a lot, and just a lot of negative self talk. And you know I'm I'm not a good enough dad. I'm not a good enough husband. I'm not a good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Like that's that's what it all basically comes back to is that I'm not the person for that. And because of that, people don't like me, don't want to be around me. And I take up space when it's not welcome. That's, that's sort of my operating baseline. And so getting over that every day is the work. Like, that's what I have to do every day. When I show up here, I have to just be me and trust that it's good enough. When I go to work, I have to show up, do my best, trust that it's good enough because there's nothing in my head. There's nothing in me that's going, yeah, you're the one, you're the one to lead this journey. You're the one to teach people. You're the one to make things better. It's all clearing that hurdle of show up, do your best and trust the process. Mm. I gotcha. I gotcha. If you guys were to change those limiting beliefs into a, an abundant phrase that really spoke to your heart, what would that phrase be for each of you? Mm. Uh, so I, I do, I utter a version of this to myself a lot. Um, and that, you know, it, there it doesn't it's very very simple it really is you are smart you are healthy you look good like and it doesn't right it's not going to ring true for a lot of people like if you're just hearing that but there's there are probably a dozen memories associated with each one of those words so like the one time somebody said that i was really smart for something or the one time somebody called me out for being you know looking good or the one time this girl flirted with me there's like there's a memory associated with each one of those words. So when I say those things, it means so much more to me. Um, it still hasn't gotten rid of the limiting beliefs, but it does help me combat them. There's three words that uh, I, I forget now that you bring it up and, and I need to bring them back into my mind more. And it's uh, when Russell Wilson was a Seahawk, I was a big fan and he would always say, why not us? And so I was, I would, for a while, I adapted that to why not me? Whenever there's something that like, I, I don't feel good enough. Why am I not the one, right? Why not me? So if it's anything, it's that. I think that that, that uh, sums up my my sort of abundant belief about whatever I currently have a limiting belief about. It's just, why, why am I not the one to do this? There we go. Well, awesome. We got one last question for you. And Jeremy, you can answer first and then you can hop off and then we can hear Zach's answer. Um, but I want to frame it and I'm going to frame it with something that Alex Hormozzi said. He pointed out that the difference between manipulation and help is intent. And I think his point here is that you're influencing people in both situations, but manipulation is about getting somebody to do something you want them to do, while help is about seeking to understand what somebody else wants and then helping them get there. Now, there's a common saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I actually found out from Dr. Alan Leica that you can't make a horse drink. You just have to salt its oats. So, I want you guys to think of a person with a fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change, but they hate their life. How can we, you guys and I, 
create an environment to salt their oats and help them change their life. So two things come to mind and one, uh, it's, it seems to be a theme today. It's just offering curiosity, offering that they do a little introspection and figure out why do you hate your life? Part two of this is, you know, the, the, just the practical application of sitting down with them and walking through the steps of why, like, why, why is this a problem? What do you believe that creates this problem? What, what, what prevents you from taking a different action? Um, and just helping them sort of talk through to find their own solution because we, we joke about this all the time, but like, you know, for the most part, people are the cause of and solution to pretty much all their problems. It's like whatever, whatever's going wrong, there's something that they're doing wrong to prevent it from being different. So if, if I could encourage anything to change, it's just that curiosity. Again, back to the, the coffee analogy, what's going wrong? I feel awful every day. And all I want for two hours is to drink coffee. Then I drink it and I feel better. Okay. Let's, let's remove that two hour pain process and just drink the coffee and get on with your day. Like clear the belief, clear the thing that you're hanging on to that makes you think this isn't possible. This isn't, this can't be better. This is just the way it is. It's, it's not the way it is. You, you can clear that clutter by getting curious about what's wrong and doing something different. Mm, I love it. I love it. Mm. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go with the, with one thing that I've used so many times. Um, and, and I have to use it on myself a lot too. Um, a lot of, a lot of resistance to change or, um, you know, feelings, being unhappy is, you know, how other people respond to you, how other people act around you. Um, and I think a lot of times people expect other people to be on the same level as them, to react in the same way as them. And they become unhappy because the other person's not reacting in the way that they thought that the other person would react based on what I would do if I was reacting to it. Um, and I have to do this with myself a lot too. Like, it's, it's about, you know, making sure that you understand that the other person has, you know, different experiences, different, uh, different upbringing, different mindsets, um, and being able to recognize that, you know, you are not the smartest person in the room, that you are surrounded by really smart people. And if you happen to be the smartest person in the room, make sure everyone knows you're not. Like it's, it's, it's not about, uh, everyone else conforming to your life, right? Because they won't, because they're, they're different people. And if you expect them to conform to your life, you're going to be disappointed every single time. Um, so really reading, being able to read the room, being able to bring yourself to a different mindset, to a different expectation, to a different reality, really based on who you're talking to, who you're interacting with. Um, you know, I, this, this happens, uh, at work every now and again, where somebody who's really, really super smart and expects everyone else to be operating at the same level. And then they don't, and they get really frustrated with it. And, you know, telling that person, Hey, look, you, you need to remember that these people are down here. Like they're average people. You are like, you know, way up here and that's really cool. And that's really great. And that's awesome. But they can't get with that. And you need to bring yourself down to their level and be relatable to them. So like being relatable to other people will, will change perceptions all over the place. So, and then going to Jeremy's thing of being curious, right? You have to be curious about what it is that you're putting out there that's making people uncomfortable or making your life miserable. So just to sum it all up is to be flexible, be able to pivot and move and who you are isn't who you have to be in every single situation and circumstance. And you can change who you are in, in one moment to the next to make that experience better. There we go. Well, awesome. That's all we got for you guys. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks yeah, for having thank us. You for the opportunity. We appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. And if you guys are listening to this and you loved what Jeremy and Zach had to say, make sure to check out their podcast. All the links to check them out will be down in the show notes. We will see you guys on the next one. And on that note, we're out.